Hi everyone, it's Joa from Special Heart Studio. Today I'm going to show you how to set up, cut, and assemble my 3D Santa sleigh. So to make it with the red and gold, I have used Cricut foil transfer sheets, 100 pound cardstock that I um, got from Clear Path Paper on Amazon. I'm really happy with happy with it. It's cut very well. And then 0.12 cover, which I believe is the same thing as 100 pound um, gold, mirror gold, also from clear path paper. Once you've downloaded and unzipped my free Santa sleigh SVG, um, you'll want to open Cricut Design Space, click upload image, and browse to navigate where you have saved the unzipped SVG format. We'll click open. On this page, you can name and tag your pattern if you want to tag it Christmas or something that would make it make it easier to find it for you later. Um, I, I don't usually do that myself, but you, it's always an option. And then we will highlight that recently uploaded image and click insert images. So I have saved this um, to cut the, the size that you saw in the little beginning intro of the video. If you want to resize it, it'll, it'd be a little bit hard to make it bigger because of the width the papers needed for the base here. You could make it smaller. I would recommend that to do that, that you leave the entire project grouped so that all of the sizes stay in the right proportions. Um, I'm going to, for this assembly video, leave it the size that I designed it. So we are going to click ungroup. Um, you'll see there are some score lines. I've already attached them. So anything with a score line, it's all set up for you. What we do have to fix and adjust are the draw lines. Um, you can do this using a pen. For this project, I am going to use the new foil kit transfers from, from Cricut. So we'll click on the, it currently says cut, but the little squiggly lines. We're going to come up here to foil and I'm going to use the bold tip. Once you've done, once you've done that on the sleigh for that side, you need to hold your shift and um, grab the foil and the sleigh itself, the red part, and attach, click attach. That's so the Cricut Design Space knows what to put the foil on. So we want this drawing in foil on the side of the sleigh. And we will repeat that for the, the sleigh down here. Let's see, it is off to the right here this one. Here you'll see it's cut. I highlighted it and it put the little box around that. We want to come up here to foil. I'm going to choose bold again. Press shift, select the side of the sleigh that I want it to foil on and click attach. And from here we're ready to get started. That's really the only alterations you need to do. I will click make it. Now, as I showed at the beginning of the video, the gold mirror paper I have is eight and a half by 11. So I'm going to drop down here and change it to eight and a half by 11. And you'll see it puts it on two pieces of paper. I've cut enough of these at the same size to know that if you manipulate this a little bit, I can squeeze this all onto one piece of paper. So I simply click on the object I'll use the little turn, and then I'm going to move that down. Um, these guys, you can do the same thing. Heavier weight paper is a little more costly, so if I can save a sheet of paper, um, save a tree, I'm, I'm going to do that. So I'm going to click the mat two here, and then send these to mat one. So to do that, you'll click on each item. So I clicked on this top one, you see the three little dots? I'm going to select move object and I want to move it to mat one. 
And there we go, it's on my mat one. I'll come back to mat two and repeat the process. So click, um, left click, move object, and I'm going to move that one to mat one also. So there we go, those all fit um, just perfectly. So now once we click make it, um, that mat two won't even, that piece will go away. Um, I know from making my prototypes and my blog photos that I can do the same thing here. So I am using 12 by 12 paper for the body of the sleigh, um, but if I can conserve a sheet, I certainly will. So you'll see here, it's wanting to cut it in three. I'm going to consolidate this down to two pieces of paper. So click the little inside side panel. I'm going to move it to mat three. And then I'll move it around here so that it's not touching the other pieces, but yet fits in there just fine. Cricut sees this the way the box is, um, and so it, it thinks it would cut all the way up here, but we know in reality it's not going to, so we're going to use this little hack to conserve paper. So we'll come back to mat five and do the same thing. Move object, we're gonna move this one to mat four. It always seems to put it in the top right corner. I'm going to rotate this a little bit and then move this part down. Once you have all the mats arranged how you want them, make sure to come back up and click on this first mat. I've accidentally forgotten to do that at times and it will start cutting in, in mid -se sequence if you're not paying attention. The cardstock I'm using is 100 pound cardstock, so I am going to filter my choices on my maker to the heavy cardstock. If you're using an Explorer, you can set your dial to custom and then you'll be able to do the same thing to select a heavy cardstock. Because I've selected heavy cardstock, the it, my machine wants me to use the double scoring wheel. Um, I'm just going to use the single scoring wheel. I've, I've figured out that it, it works perfectly. If you don't have a scoring wheel, you can also use the scoring stylus. You would just click the edit tools. The last thing I'm going to change um, for this, I have worked with this paper enough with my prototypes that for both the gold and the red, I'm going to use more pressure. Um, I want the foil to be very visible and my blade is probably just a hair dull, so I find that the more pressure works better. Because I'm using the heavyweight paper, I will use a green mat. And I still want my paper to be adhered to the mat very well. Um, so I will use a brayer. It's kind of rubbery so it doesn't scratch the, the mirror finish. I've already put my single scoring wheel in here in clamp B. So we will get started. Once you've unloaded your mat, turn the paper, turn it over so that the paper's touching your work surface. And we will, I use my fingernail to get under the edge of the paper here. It's kind of hard to show on video. Um, but we'll slowly peel the mat away from the paper, keeping it as flat as possible to your work surface. 
so that it doesn't curl. Set these aside. Use the paper to get these little bits off the mat, make sure it's clean. Okay. Move on to the red. This is the piece that we be, will be foiled. So I'm still going to use the brayer to make sure that the cardstock is um, adhered well to the mat. And then we, I'm going to use a big piece. I think for this design you could probably use the smaller ones that come with the kit itself, the samples. So the foil tip, foil sheets come with this tape um, to adhere. So we'll stick it close enough to the edge that our design will still cut if it's also close to the edge. I don't think this one's super duper close, but. You don't want the, the foil piece to be too wrinkled, but it, it doesn't have to be perfectly flat. And then we have one more here. My screen is telling me to load. This is, it's got the three little lines. So this is the bold uh, tip. Now for this 100 weight red cardstock. I am going to switch my pressure to more. Um, I know this from, I've learned from making the sleigh that I've already put together. You'll, I'd always recommend testing. Um, you know, your machine may vary. It may vary depending on how much your blade has been used um, for cutting blade. So always do a test cut so that you know, you know what setting you want to use before you ruin a whole sheet of good foil or good um, cardstock. So when using the foil, it will the machine will kick it out just far enough that you can remove the foil for so that it now can do the cut part. This is the little sample pack that came with it, my foil tip. I, I could have strategically placed two, two of these gold pieces if you don't have the, the big 
piece. And then I will cut this. You can't use the part right here that's already been used over because that's it's pressure sensitive and this part's already been used. But there's definitely still good pieces to this piece of foil that I could use for a smaller project. And I certainly save scraps, so I will save this. So I'm going to remove the tape here. What you do this while it's still in the machine. Don't um, eject the mat. If you're careful, you can reuse the tape over also. They, they do give you enough for the sheets, but you know, as I said, I'll reuse this. Um, so I'll, I'll stick it back on this as carefully as possible. go. It's so pretty. Okay, now it's ready to cut the sides of the sleigh out here where we already foiled. So we'll push the, the go button. Oh, I forgot to take the foil tip out, but it's going to recognize that and tell me. didn't tell me. So when I was filming this, cutting this to uh, make the tutorial, I forgot to change out the foil tip in between after it had foiled and before cut. Um, with this paper, I like to dub use double cuts anyway. So I figured out, of course, I didn't want to put another piece of foil back on the project. I took the tip out, the, the little three line tip out of the foil housing and let it run just going through the motion. So it looks like it was foiling again to trick it and then put my blade back in so that it did the double cut. So do all of these steps without ever ejecting it from the mat so that you can um, force your machine to cut the design again in the same place. I'm going to go ahead and cut the rest of the pieces um, of the, the second sheet of red cardstock. I will again use a double cut on the second sheet and then we will skip ahead to get to the assembly portion. Okay, now that we have all the pieces cut, it's time to assemble our sleigh. Um, I'm going to start with these rails and the decorative, mm -hmm, decorative, trim on top. We will glue those. I'm using art glitter glue. Um, I like that precision tip and it holds really well. I do like to keep a paper towel handy to a little bit on this stuff.
go. glue on my finger so it's on that mirror finish. It'll wipe off. I use the little pin that the glue closes with to scrape off any extras there, excess. Okay, we'll repeat it for this side. glitter glue gives you enough time you can slide it around to the right place. Just be careful that you're not getting it on the, the wrong side of this mirror finish paper. Okay, these guys will set aside. Next, this is the base. So there's a little slit here. You wanna make sure when you're folding this that you don't rip the front part of the rail off. So I'm gonna simply fold it along the score line both ways. There we go. And then we will attach both sides of this lay. I probably go a little overboard with glue, but I want it to stay together. It's a little close to the edge there. This one, I'll go ahead and put flat since it's use a bone folder frequently when I'm using glue. Make sure it's pressed down really well. Repeat that for the second side.
we go. Next, for the body, front, tail, sides, the tricky part. The part where the half, these are all full triangles, I'm calling this a half triangle, this goes in the back and the big part. So it's, it's bigger here, it needs to be bigger on this side. So I'm going to fold this along the score lines. And then the front ones, we're just kind of simply roll this up to match the, the front roll of this lay here. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can adjust it as you glue. And then we'll fold the little tabs in on both sides. And then for the back, we'll do similar. It doesn't have to be rolled too much. The very last two score lines, we will go the opposite way. So that's where it bends out. Oop, bends out this way. So on the back part, we'll go down. So it kind of makes a little bit of an S there. So you may want to go ahead and fold these in before you adhere glue. I would recommend trying to fit this in here so you know how it'll fit and, and where where you're going with it. Um, I designed it so that this this triangle or rectangle piece um, sits directly on the base there. So you should be able to line it up um, so that the, the two rectangles match and then you can adhere the back and the front of the sleigh. So I'm going to start by putting glue on this. And like I said, we'll make sure it lines up with that rectangle on the bottom while we still have time to move it. And it should rest all the way against the rectangle on the bottom also. I'll try to move this so you can see. Um, so I'm going to press that into place. And then I'm going to fold this. and put just a little bit of glue here on the bottom. It doesn't have to be a ton. And this side also. And we'll mesh that up. So I'll use my bone folder to push that side seam. And then kind of just use my hands to Make sure the glue on the base there gets okay so then i'm going to focus my attention on the front and these will simply curl around the very tip end of the paper should match up with this round knob um, and you'll glue both of these sides that same way. So just manipulate the folds enough. Sometimes you have to move that in. And we'll use some glue. So I'll start here. So my glue is... dinner time. I'm hungry, so I'm shaking. And like I said, you'll just want to kind of follow that around. So use and then hold it in place for a minute so that it has time to dry. 
where, and it should just kind of follow around of the front of the side of the sleigh there. So I like to set it down, press on, make sure they're in the right spot and use my bone folder. And then I'm going to repeat that on this, this side, which gets even trickier to show on camera. the curve of the front of the sleigh around. I like to make sure it's just a hair back so it's not sticking out if you're looking just from the side. And then we'll hold those in place for a minute while they dry. And then we'll repeat this process with the back. So we'll fold these in. Make sure they line up. And it should come pretty close to the top of the ball, ball, this round part of the back of the sleigh here. So gently bend this without creasing it. Follow the curve around here. it in place for a second and you see you don't see it from the side here but it's lined up and then we'll do the same thing on this side Keeping it close, close to the edge of the sides, but not past. There we go. Now, I made inserts to cover up these tabs. Just kind of give it a more finished look so that you don't see the tabs once. Um, you could do these in a different color. Um, I kept it to the, the same color for this sleigh, but we'll simply glue these. And you can just place it in there. Um, one of the prototypes I made may not have been aligned perfectly. If that's the case, just use your trim, your scissors and, and trim, trim it just a little bit so that it fits. Wouldn't worry about if it lines up exactly perfect. Um, but if you've glued the front and tail base close to the edge, it should work in there. just kind of finishes it off so you don't see all the tabs like um, happen on this this side how you can see these so that one we'll put on that side Go. 
push that down into place. And the last little finishing touch I've added for our sleigh is the trim on the front and back. So this you will simply fold in half. And then glue it on the front and back. Pinch that, hold it in place for a minute or two. Make sure that glue adheres. Pretty little sleigh. You could put some candy in this. It's really sturdy um, from using the 100 pound paper. You could um, add some greenery or just some decoration. Or as my daughter found when I was working on the prototypes, her elf fits absolutely perfectly in the sleigh, in his tuxedo, in his fancy sleigh. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. The SVG for the sleigh can be downloaded free on my website, specialheartstudio.com. I will have a link to the blog post in the description of the video. Um, the blog post will also have, have a list of the materials I used to make my sleigh. Um, if you like this, please subscribe to my channel. Um, check out my blog. I have tons of free designs, perfect for paper and for shirts, signs, vinyl type designs that may interest you. Thanks.